Okay, welcome back. What we're going to do here in this scene is uh, bring in our look files from the previous chapter and apply them and set up some basic lighting inside of Katana. So what we need to do for that is use a look file assign node and we can connect that in We need to select the correct look file, which is this one here. And we need to add a path. I'm going to add a path statement there. And just add to root world. In this case, uh, I am live rendering, but I don't have the, uh, I forget what this is called, uh, the live render update. So I don't have that tick for everything. So I'm going to shift click here. And that did refresh the live viewer, so it happened very quickly there. But we still don't have materials on. The reason for this is we need a look file resolve node as well. So you need to actually tell the tell Katana that you want it to resolve the look file, meaning uh, unpack it behind the scenes, get the materials, and and have them all for, from this point in the graph. They they'll exist in the scene. You can see um, if we calm down. Um, yeah, you can see now that we've got the materials on our objects and it's all working. Um, I've added the, uh, off the video, I added a, a basic bark material to our tree as well. So, fairly simple stuff, uh, assigning and resolving look files, um, paste on the work from the look development artist or um, whoever, and uh, really super useful. From the lighting point of view though, at the moment we're still using the look dev scene. Uh, in this example I've deactivated the backdrop because I didn't want that, um, but we still have the HDRI. So I could come into the look dev scene um, gizmo and find the gaffer 3 node and deactivate it, um, but I could also use the opportunity to show you a cool feature of Katana. So what we can do in Gaffer 3 is I can go on the cogwheel here, go show incoming scene. And what that does is it will show us everything that's in the same lighting folder, uh, in, this, in the default Gaffer folder here. Um, it will show us every light that's upstream in the graph on other Gaffer 3 nodes. And it's just a preview, like I can't really edit them and I can't even see the properties. It's sort of locked off, but it's telling you they exist. What I can do is I can right click and go adopt for editing. So this now enables me to see everything uh, and it enables me to do things like turning off the light. As the mute uh, row here, we can uh, mute that light. So that's what I want to do. I don't want to have the neutral look dev HDRI anymore. I'm going to right click in this grey area and go add through to light, environment light. So straight away we just get a flat um, light just from the sky dome being in the scene. But I'm going to plug in an image. I'm going to come to material tab, down to environment light and choose my, choose a HDR. Keep in mind that you will have to convert HDRs to TDL files. Um, but Foundry are adding that as uh, an automated process soon. So hopefully, hopefully you don't have to manually convert those by the time you're watching this. Uh, so yeah, we've got some lighting on the object, and I need to. Uh, I want to visualize some more in the viewer. So let me come here. I want to visualize uh, just the or the character and the environment. So I'm just going to pin visible. Double click, pin visible leaves, and tab it back up. So, add to this scene. I'm going to bring down my environment light a little bit. Bring it down to like 0.8. And just add some other three, the light, lights. So this is not going to be a lighting tutorial as such, just more about how you get around. Get around in three to light and um, to light for Katana. What I'm doing here is I've got the point light and it's probably 
fair while away. If I come here, select my point light, um, it's down here on the graph. What I can do, you notice to select that object, I had to go through here, find it, select it in here. There's a good feature I almost always turn on called sync selection on the Gaffer 3. If we change this to in out, when I select over here, it highlights it on the scene graph and vice versa as well. So that's really good to, to do. Uh, it can make life a lot easier. So I'm gonna position this and give it some exposure. So we've got really fast updates on this. Um, and yeah, you can see we're getting decent quality sampling to see our lighting um, and it's really fast. So what I wanna do here is uh, show some of the three to light settings. My render settings here is mainly just to choose the DL, the 3DL renderer and set it to HD. Um, the DL settings is where all the three to light settings are. So with Katana, anything that's yellow um, shows you what you've changed. So it's really quick to find settings that you've changed from default. It's one of the things I really like about Katana. So one of the reasons, I'm gonna set this section to default down the bottom. So when we do a render with complete default, we've got 64 shading samples um, with no speed boost. Uh, if we turn on speed boost, what we get is half the resolution. I probably need to restart the live, I'm not sure. Um, we get half resolution and it puts down the sampling quite a lot. But once we get our first pass of this now with this speed boost on um, and these settings, you'll see that you get really good performance now. Um, I'll show my um, processor specifications as well. It's an i7-6850, it's a 12 core. So it's a good i7, but um, so, but it's pretty good. Like it's a nice fast IPR. Um, that's it working there. It's, it's been quite good. I'm, I am quite new to 3 to light, but uh, I use a lot of um, Redshift at home and uh, in the past I've used a lot of PR men and Arnold and before that mental ray. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really liking through the light so far. I find it quite simple. Um, a, a, lot of the, a lot of the parts of it are heavily simplified but still work really well and give good results, so I can't complain. Um, the major part where it's more simple in Katana is the AOV, so that's something I wanna to touch on before we finish up. Um, in through the light, one of the things I really like is that they've, they've simplified the hell out of AOVs in Katana with things like PR Man. Um, we have a, a huge amount of nodes. There's at least like two nodes per AOV and uh, there's quite a bit of setup. Um, that said, in Katana, you do that setup once, you template it or put it in a macro and you never do it again. Um, but uh, it's still very nice to see uh, this sort of thing here. So I'm gonna remove the AOVs I have and just to show you the, the UI, because one of the things I um, assume is going to happen with 3 to light now it's rolled in as standard with Katana, they're doing a lot of work to make this look, uh, look and feel really good for the artist. So I'm hoping these sort of menus and um, better sort of uh, UI stuff is going to filter through to Arnold and Redshift and all these other renderers as well. Um, so anyway, I'm going to choose some, pa some render passes that I want to use. I won't need reflection or incandescence, but I will choose normal position Z, UV, and uh, with ID, I just want to choose one of the types of ID passes. So I like surface shader IDs, but you might need different ones. And uh, then make sure that uh, crypto map is turned on if you want to use that. That enables us to, this converts the any ID passes to crypto map versions of those passes. So uh, you can choose the uh, image format and the depth and give it a path here. So we don't need to use um, output define, um, it's like render output define nodes and things like that. You can actually skip a lot of that with um, through the light and just put your path in here. The token for the AOVs is like so. You've got a, um, a less than AOV greater than 
little token you put in there which will name it correctly. Um, in here, in the render, you can actually see uh, the resulting path that it's going to create. Um, so coming through to the other things I want to show with AOVs, um, you might have noticed I've got a 3 to light renderer here as well. So when we use 3 to light in Katana, come to your preferences, edit preferences, 3 to light, you can choose with the render view. I'm not sure what the default is, but um, you've got the 3 to light display, the Katana monitor, or both. I'm set to both. And uh, what we can do with that is obviously I've been using the monitor for the whole tutorial, so this works as normal. Um, but we also have the 3 to light view running as well in the background. And in some cases, this is really, really good to use. I use a little bit of both. Um, and especially when I'm working with AOVs. So I can double click on this and it shows me all the AOVs that I've selected. And I can double click on individual one and it goes in or single click um, and it goes in. And I can choose different ones. Uh, but what's really cool, if I just go to my RGBA and press Control and X, it brings up the mixer. It's also available in here. And this is really cool. We can actually blend and do some basic comp, like uh, it, this HDR is way too hot um, on this area for reflection for what I want. So I can preview what it would look like, you know, just a little bit less without having to do a slack comp or that sort of stuff. So this little... Uh, quality of light features, I guess you'd call it. Um, but you can tweak that in the, the 3 to light viewer. Um, so that is really cool. Okay, so with um, 3 to light, uh, when rendering, we can do a disc render or a live render or preview render here. And it will render a single frame. The license that comes with um, Katana 3 is a GUI license only. There's no batch rendering enabled. Um, but when you, uh, so contact Foundry if you want to do a batch license for doing, for rendering out animations. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how they're, they're doing the licensing for that. But all of the uh, in GUI stuff works without a watermark um, as we are now. So with the demo of um, Katana 3 and 3 to light, um, you'll be able to utilize the same sort of rendering stuff as well. So what we can do with that lighting um, from here, we can obviously just render it out um, or we can go through to actual baking out different light look files, we can do that as well, just like we did with the materials. We've got this lighting area here bracketed um, where we can uh, you know, store different lighting scenarios that we could show maybe in reviews later. We could store our work into multiple um, views, things like that. Um, but that's most of what I wanted to show today. So thank you very much for watching the videos. I hope you got a bit out of it seeing a creature going from a 3D app through to look development, storing out the look files and then applying them in a basic little scene. I hope you got a bit of an idea of what Katana 3 is uh, about and I uh, hope to talk to you soon.